Who's the, uh, you know, he's familiar with the offense because the uh, Broncos failure. That's his face. Ball guy. All right. Let's just do it that way. I agree okay. with you. That's how I'm going to start doing it. Uh, thank you for all your production help. I, I appreciate you disguising my Hired injury. a coach to call timeouts. Remember that? Who's this guy? Clock management guy. Hire somebody. <laughs> it's actually just me doing recall with Hank Goldberg, only he would just get the wrong name and you'd be too afraid to correct him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Biden uh, turned 81 and had 81 candles on the cake. Did I get fooled by the internet? Or was I, was, that a real I thing? was looking in the break to see if that was real also because it looked like a forest fire was about I, to it, start. You, you just have real. to get the eight and the one. That's what you have to well, do. I'm, thank you, Stugatz. <laughs> yes, you are absolutely correct, Stugatz. I, I want to know, is it real or is if it that's not real? real? Don't it put 81 be. candles on fire in front of Joe Biden. <laughs> we correct. need to get to November. <laughs> His lungs correct. can't handle the blowing. That's Why? correct. It seems like a risk that we should not be taking. Can you tell me it did did I get ball sacked by the White House or is it real? <laughs> tell me, please, that there was a cake with 81 <laughs> candles on it. Please, please tell me that that is a real thing because that is too many candles. What is the cutoff on candles? Honestly, it's like once you're in double digits, you're in a dangerous area. Are you not anything in double digits? You got to just start buying the candle. Well, that's a number. That's correct. I mean, what are we doing here? Uh, that's uh, what I said. Uh, Steve that, Martin. That is, yeah. uh, that is what Stugatz <laughs> just said. It said it a little bit differently, but not much differently what is the cutoff because if you're 12 you still like birthdays you still want a cake you still want your 12 candles i feel like 12 well, is is probably the cutoff uh, billy what did your investigation reveal stugatz has now said he's got further reporting on the chris cody report from before <laughs> he has talked to joe thomas it is not a timeshare it's an airbnb in mexico yeah. uh, get your facts state uh facts right please. straight yeah. Yeah. yes yeah. thank you <laughs> Billy, what's this investigation Raskin. revealing? I'm seeing the same picture that you saw. I'm just kind of seeing what the source of this picture is. It can't be real. Is. It's okay. crazy if I it's real. I hope it's real. I need it to be real. I want it to be real. <laughs> I, that's, that's a so small cake. I, 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 that I, is, I, is an <laughs> inferno <laughs> in front of Get him away from that. Get him Get him out of there. Yeah, get you, him out of the room. You would think they'd go bigger cake for right. all those candles. <laughs> okay, so this is what I can tell you. Joe Biden's official Instagram has that photo on it. Okay. So it seems real. He just joined threads yesterday. I saw that. That is 81 candles. Still trying to make that happen. That can't be real. This is a security risk. An eight, put well, it on it's also like he has to blow out 81 candles. And hopefully the person who thought this was a good idea didn't think like, Let's get them with the trick candles also because, like, they it may die. does not have the lung capacity for that. Get that cake away from that An man. An aide is coming He's in with a enough. fire extinguisher at the end of that. <laughs> you can't blow that out. There was an inferno on his lap. Where's his body, man? Are we back to being able to blow on cakes? Because it, it's a new thing now. <laughs> what do you mean? It's like with, ever since COVID, like, the way people do the weird thing where oh, it's yeah. like, I don't want to yep. touch it. It's like just yeah. blowing the damn Don't cake. take away my blowing of cakes. It's just ridiculous. Someone's sitting there for like 10 minutes trying to like get a thing out. It's like, just you will on. not cancel that. Mulkey said, I'm fine. <laughs> Can we get that video, please? That seems let's thank you. Excellent transition. Ooh, I like her. Maybe the greatest in show history. <laughs> uh, yes. Well done. Let's get that video now. please. Patriot talking. Uh, I, <laughs> this is a good story because, uh, well, it's an interesting story. No, good. Angel Reese, <laughs> that might have been nah, good. Outside of the women's basketball. The Angel Reese story is interesting. She's disappeared, I think. The She's room disappeared? Yeah. Huh. Uh, very quietly, a champion player for a champion team is not playing. We and should look into this. If she Mulkey, just disappeared. Like she's missing? Or yeah. Like no, no, this is a good story. We'll, we'll inform you right now. This missing is from play. Huge NIL athlete, uh, probably up there with Caitlin Clark. It's funny how in the United States, co the collegiate basketball is the main stage. It's bigger than pro basketball. And Angel Reese is one of, certainly on the Mount Rushmore right now, of known women's uh, basketball players in this country. And she has not been appearing for LSU basketball, and people have been wondering. Yeah, so she's been out for two and a half games now. And she sat out against Kent State and then didn't play again yesterday. And there started to be these rumors that Angel Reese w didn't have, like, the grade eligibility to play. So Kim Mulkey came out, coughed all over everybody, and said that <laughs> it's none of their business. All right, hold on. Let's play. Let's, she's yes, blowing out let, cakes. Well, I mean. Yes, look at this. She will happily, no doubt. Uh, yes, blow out cakes even if she's not invited look to a party. Uh, uh, let's, let's listen to this because she's just hacking on everybody. 
comedy and making jokes. Oh, I ain't a sissy. I don't have allergies. I got some kind of cold. It might be COVID, but I ain't testing. <laughs> no, it's sinus. I don't know what you call it. Allergies, flu. I don't know. So if y'all get the flu, blame me during for Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> uh, God, I hope she's single. <laughs> Can we listen again? Traditional to, American are, values. Are those tassels? I just want to hear on the microphone. What was funny is as she's getting up, I think uh, the fabrics on her. Do you have a sister? On her top are are hitting are hitting her blazer and making sounds that uh, you can hear as the ambient hubba noise. Hubba bubba. <laughs> I ain't a sissy. I don't have allergies. I got some kind of cold. It might be COVID, but I ain't testing. <laughs> Damn right, sister. No, it's sinus. I don't know what you call it. Allergies, flu. I don't know. So if y'all get the flu, blame me during Thanksgiving, right? It's a combination of tassels and crumpling up of paper. That's what it is. And I, tassels yes. is probably not what those are called. Strong probably, leader. <laughs> Yeah, tassels would be the right term okay, for that. But that is the sound Freedom of Freedom flare. Yeah. It's, uh, is <laughs> <laughs> Freedom flare. Okay, that's better than tassels. I, uh, but the, the Angel Reese story, she's got, Stugatz, this one's interesting, okay? You've got Mulkey's a champion. She is a personality, a personality in a sport that has gotten very big, very fast, has gotten v not that fast, but now valuable as well. She's a face and voice and the player empowerment in her sport. She's got a star. Yes. She's got a star who's made a deal with Shaq. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal is now the president of a sneaker company, and I don't know whether she's going to class or not going to class, but we're at an age where if these people don't want to be going to class, students don't want to be going to class, they're making so much. Yeah, but <laughs> you're going to seize on these people, and I'm scared of Joe Zagaki there. So this started back before the, the school year even started because Angel said that she was too famous that like she couldn't go to class because you know it was a distraction, people would recognize her. So she was like, I'm only taking oh. online classes then like recently this week her mom posted something on her instagram story about flage's mom who's another player on the lsu basketball team who's also very talented also worth a lot of money about her grammar so flage's mom responded and said like how can you talk about grammar when your daughter has under a 2.0 gpa Ooh, um and so that's where the rumors of the gpa started kim mulkey didn't address whether that was well, the issue well she or said not. no but she said the issue's obvious Mulkey has said that the reason that her star player isn't around, that the reason's obvious, but she's not telling us what the reason is while coughing and, and laughing about, uh, <laughs> about COVID. She's not, we don't so know great. the reason. No, we don't know the reason. And Angel Reese has not been silent through this. She did tweet, please don't believe everything you read. And that's all we've heard from Angel Reese. She's still been like posting on social media. She hasn't actually disappeared. She just hasn't been playing for LSU and she hasn't been at the games either. Nice steak night at the Sizzler. <laughs> what does the rest of that night look like? Uh, Sizzler, Sizzler salad bar, uh, baked potato. Did you hear Dollaritas are back? <laughs> Shrimp scampi. Oh, the scampi. I feel remorse and shame in what it is I'm presently telling you, but every time I see a Sizzler, I am made deeply happy. What? Because that was wealth and riches in my childhood, that salad bar. That salad bar was an opulent buffet. From, you went there for the salad from huh? heaven. So much blue cheese. <laughs> Maybe take her to the melting pot. Oh, fondue. And we fonded. That Sizzler in North Miami Beach on 163rd, right next to the Krispy Kreme. Oh, yeah. How many Sizzlers are there? How many? There can't be. There that was many one in left. Salt Lake City. I think there's just one. I went, That's went none, to of this is, <laughs> none of the information you guys are giving is close to accurate. I went to a sizzler with Juju Gotti in Utah. That's a great sentence. Yeah. Their salad bar had chicken wings. <laughs> That's what I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you. That's why That's you like their it. salad bar at a yes. taco yes. station. Yes. <laughs> what? You're was, I made nachos at their salad bar. Yes. Well, the, my, my mother <laughs> proclaimed the sizzler salad bar the greatest meal that anyone on earth could have. There's 10 in Puerto Rico. Well, that's wow. not America. Uh, <laughs> and they try to lie to themselves. But it ain't. Florida has one remaining in Kissimmee. One? <laughs> one? I don't think it does. I'm on the Sizzler website for locations, unless it's like privately owned. 
Kiss me. Kiss me. Kiss me. I dig her. <laughs> Brian Stelter has been on with us before, and he's got a book out right now that is very popular. Network of Lies, the epic saga, epic saga of Fox News, Donald Trump, and the battle for American democracy. Thank you, Brian, for joining us. I should tell the audience. Thank you. He is also a former media correspondent at the New York Times and CNN and a special correspondent for Vanity Fair. Let's begin with the idea of Tucker Carlson and Elon Musk merging and Tucker Carlson possibly being a running mate for Donald Trump. Can you give me an idea of how real any of that is? I do not think Tucker will be the VP, but I think he wants to be thought about that way. He wants to be viewed as a political kingmaker, a political star, and that's why he's out there hanging out with Donald Trump. Remember, Tucker Carlson called Trump a demonic force, a destroyer, but now they have this bromance going on because they need each other. They need each other's fans and audiences. Is that what is also happening with Tucker and Musk? I think so. I think that's what put the, puts the network in Network of Lies. It's bigger than just Fox. It's also about the mis and disinformation that Musk and his friends share on that platform. And, and that's where Tucker is now. He's hanging out, making videos for X. He's not nearly as popular as he was on Fox. But honestly, that's because of the Fox audience, 65, 75, 85 years old, uh, they're not really hanging out on Twitter or X, you know what I mean? What in your book is new or learned about Tucker's exit at Fox? I say in the book that uh, it wasn't just one thing. They didn't get rid of him for just one reason. It was everything. It was every reason. It was like any bad breakup. You know, when, when one person finally decides to dump the other person, it's been building for years and there's dozens of reasons why it happens, even though sometimes there's like a last affair or betrayal that actually cause it. That's what happened. He, he was intolerable for lots of reasons. He was rude behind the scenes. He was airing conspiracy theories and lies on the air. Lachlan Murdoch just decided he had had enough. In our sphere, we have yeah. learned as a company that leaving ESPN gave us more value than we had at ESPN. Tucker That's Carlson's right. value is where outside of Fox? He's different because he's in limbo. Uh, you know, he's had this con complicated contractual situation with Fox. Fox has said and sent, sent him some threatening legal letters. So he's not able, like, right now, he's not fully doing whatever his new, new, new thing is. But he is lining up investor money and advertiser deals. And I would not count him out. I think he's going to be able to build something pretty real and significant, maybe next year in time for the 2024 election. But right now, I think he's stuck in that in-between. You were reporting this book while covering the defamation suit by Dominion Voting Systems. Uh, the yeah. end result of that, I know uh, that we wanted to see uh, the real stuff. How disappointing was it that <laughs> for the ending of your book that that lawsuit was settled <laughs> at the last minute? I was actually thrilled because instead of having a six week trial where people were going to hear about this all spring long, uh, I got to save a lot of the good stuff for the book. Look, you're right that there were some exhibits, some documents that were redacted that will now be redacted forever. That's one of the reasons why Fox paid almost $800 million. They had some pretty ugly secrets that they wanted to keep buried. But here's the truth. 600, 700 pages of this material was published in, in plain view. It was hard to find unless you have a login for a Wilmington, Delaware database. You can't really go and read it. But that's why I did it. I was able to go and read all these emails. And what you realize is these people are just all too human. You know, they're greedy. They're selfish. All they care about are their ratings or their, or their, or their love lives. You know, I mean, I guess. I guess that's everybody, right? Uh, to some degree, but that's what was so weird about reconstructing this this scene, the, the, this period for the book is that uh, all these people, you know, they all just want uh, the, whatever's best for them. I guess. When you were sifting through the stuff and mining, what do you regard as the most interesting things you discovered? You know, there were really re revealing emails about these Fox stars saying what, what seems to be the truth about Donald Trump, but that they never say on the air. You know, Laura Ingram, the 10 p.m. host, now 7 p.m. host, saying Trump's always on a grievance loop running in his head. Uh, Tucker Carlson saying, you know, he could have won the election. He would have won the election in 2020 if he had focused on law and order and reopening the schools. Like sometimes I feel like these Fox stars are better politicians than the actual politicians because they're on every day trying to win viewers and voters 
every single day. On the other hand, of course, that causes them to go into really extreme and radical territory and push really wild conspiracy theories that actually hurt the Republican Party. And that's the other big takeaway in the in the book here is, you know, Republicans keep losing. It's partly because of Fox. <laughs> Remember the red wave in 2022 that never actually came? I, I actually put a lot of the blame for that on Fox for misleading the audience. What can you tell me about these people as calculated actors, professional actors? Calculated actors. You mean, are they really, are they, do they really mean what they say? I'm saying this in two ways. I'm saying uh, calculated actors in trying to instigate for the sense of provocation and calculated actors like professional thespians. <laughs> yes. Well, look, there is obviously a performative aspect to television, and, and some of these hosts on, on right wing TV are better at it than others. You know, I once went out to lunch with one of these one of these guys, and I realized that he really does treat it like he's an actor. He he practices his lines uh, ahead of time in the mirror. And I got to be honest, you know, I was at CNN nine years. I never sat in the mirror and practiced my script like I wanted to, you know, perform it on stage. Like I was just trying to report the news. But but you're right. Some of these some of these you know folks in the net work of lies they really do think of themselves as actors and uh and I, they also you know they're not always buying what they're selling they're not always high on their own supply i think the scariest people are the ones that are the people that actually believe what they're saying uh, when maria bartiromo's on the air and she actually believes trump is the winner of the election uh, to me that that shows a lack of common sense and critical thinking skills what are the things about your book that people are talking to you the most about? What are they finding illuminating? What is the reporting mm. producing for you that they have further questions on because it stimulates their curiosities? I think the big question I keep getting asked is, is Rupert Murdoch, um, is he dumb or is he just playing dumb? And I'm sorry, Rupert, if you're listening, you know, 92 years old, he's got nothing better to do than, than listen to us while he's on his yacht somewhere, right? But he seems to play dumb in a lot of these uh, messages. You know, he was deposed by Dominion's lawyers for seven hours. It's the only time he's ever been interviewed in like a decade. And he sounded like he didn't know what happened on his own network. He sounded like he didn't know who the key players were. It sounded like he barely understands how Fox News works. So is that really the truth under oath or was he just playing dumb? Like, in other words, is he is he really not in charge? Is he really just sitting back enjoying his his mansions? And look, maybe he is. Is it possible? Like, which way would you guess on that one? I think he has allowed the leadership team at Fox uh, to have too much leeway. Like, he's given them too much rope, you know? He he likes to, to, to be distant. You remember in Succession, Lucas Madison says he's hiring a pain sponge. This is the billionaire character. He doesn't want to deal with all the dirty stuff, so he hires a pain sponge. That's what Rupert Murdoch does. He has a lot of pain sponges. How much are the Murdochs really like Succession? You know, succession is crazier, of course. Dramas always are. You know, I, I'm a producer on the morning show on Apple TV Plus, And thankfully, the Today Show and Good Morning America are not as nuts as the morning show on Apple. But I think what is true about succession is that when Rupert Murdoch dies, the four adult children are going to fight over the companies. And we don't know how that's going to play out. No one knows how it's going to play out. Uh, Rupert's retired, semi-retired. Uh, yeah, semi-retired. It's it's taking effect this week, actually. Uh, Rupert says he's still going to be actively involved, but what he's doing is he's stepping aside from the boards of his companies because he wants to show the world that he really believes in his son Lachlan, that he really wants Lachlan to be the face of the companies. But for as long as Rupert is on this earth, he is going to be involved. How much are these other networks that are going off into the further fringes of the extreme impacting Fox? Well, I think they're all nipping at Fox's heels. They're all biting around the edges. And, and none, none of those bites are fatal, but they're all kind of painful. They all hurt a little bit. You know, Newsmax and Steve Bannon and the Daily Wire, you know, that's the network part of this story. And it's an echo chamber, right? If they all say the same thing, if all a dozen different places all tell you the sky is falling, then you're going to start to look up and wonder. And that's ultimately why I think this contributes to a real coarsening of the discourse and makes it harder for us to all go have Thanksgiving next week and actually agree on anything. What do you view as the smartest things Fox has done and the most evil of the things Fox has oh, done? Oh, I can't say evil. What's the smartest thing they've done? Um, Look, they put on a great TV show. I, I just as a viewer, you know, they light up the screen. It's the same way you guys do. You know, the visuals, the colors, the effects, the production values. Fox is very good at putting on a good show. And, you know, uh, credit to them for that. 
what wh what's the worst part? I think the worst part is when Donald Trump lost an election, he said he, he, he pretended to win it and Fox fell along with it and went around, along with the lie and promoted the lie. And they promoted it for months to the point where some people bought plane tickets, flew across the country to Washington, D.C. and stormed our capital. Uh, I think that's pretty, pretty bad. In retrospect, when you went through <laughs> everything that you went through and learned what you did about uh, that part of the election and being complicit yeah. on helping something that felt like it was threatening democracy, what were the parts that made you feel aghast just as an American citizen, never mind as a journalist? It, here's what really drove me crazy when I was reconstructing this. Uh Sean Hannity knew what was going to happen. You know, he, well, let me, let me let me rephrase. I want to be polite to Sean. Sean Hannity was worried about what might happen on January 6th. He was so worried that on New Year's Eve, even again on January 5th, he's texting Mark Meadows, the White House chief of staff, warning that Trump is getting bad advice. He's getting bad information. Uh, Donald, uh, you know, you've got Sean Hannity, who is the closest of all of Trump's friends at Fox, saying, I'm really worried about the next 48 hours. So I want to know what was in Sean's head. What did he hear from Donald Trump? What did he think Trump was planning? How much did Hannity know about the coup attempt? Hannity's never talked about this publicly. He's never revealed what he knows about Trump's state of mind. But thanks to these investigations, we've been able to read his text messages. So we know he was worried about January 6th. That's the kind of stuff that grinds my gears because, I, you know, you have a responsibility if you're a broadcaster, not just a journalist. He's not a journalist, but, you know, he's a broadcaster. He's, he's out there winning the trust of his viewers. He had a responsibility, I think, to speak up, and he didn't. Does he, though? I think he does. I think he does because, you know, we, we should all look out for each other. This is about more than politics. It's about more than red versus blue. It's about having a shared reality. It's about having common ground rather than, you know, watching us tear each other apart and ended up with, you know, someone smearing and smearing and feces in the Capitol. The reason I ask, does he have a responsibility is because where are you drawing the line on that? Recusing yourself at that stage? Right. Like where is, uh, once you've gone down this path, you've, I yeah. mean, you've shed a lot of the responsibility on everything you're doing. You're hundred percent right. And, and, you know, and that's Hannity's brand. He is a Republican cheerleader. He exists in order to defeat Democrats and elect Republicans. That's true. But I wish that there, there were still uh, aspects in our country and our society that were about more than just elections, more than just about winning a policy argument. And I think when it comes down to this sense of a prospect of violence, right, a violence might break out. That to me is, is an area where we should put down our put down our, our political weapons and try to calm nerves, calm things down. The name of the book, Network of Lies, the epic saga of Fox News, Donald Trump and the battle for American democracy. It is getting rave reviews, as I said. Uh, you have a top five for us before you get out of here? A top five? I do have a top five for you. Can you handle it? Are you yeah. ready? Well, what's it about? Five ways Fox engineers a radicalized audience. How does the audience get so radicalized? I've got the ways. All right. Number five. Number five is shouting the lie and whispering the truth. They're really loud about the lie and they only whisper the truth. Number four. That actually worked. Um, avoiding inconvenient truths, you know. Uh, for example, uh, with the pro-life Hold on debate, a second. Hold on, right. hold on a second. Avoiding inconvenient truths. That's right. Okay, I'm getting the hang of it. Here's what they do. Uh, when they're talking about pro-lifers, when they're talking about people who want to expand abortion rights, they say, oh, they just must be brainwashed. They don't want to accept the inconvenient truth that actually a majority of Americans want that kind of freedom. Number three. Number three, clip, clip, clip. Hey, there it is. <laughs> What they do is they clip these, you know, tiny out of context clips. Uh, let's say, you know, a fist fight in a in a CVS or you know some argument in a, on the street in San Francisco. They they portray cities and liberal areas as these hellscapes, as these Armageddon, these apocalyptic places, just based on out of context clips. Number two. Number two, using the memory hole. Go on. They just bury stories down the memory hole, the stories that hurt too much, stories like Trump losing the election. Maybe. They just pretend things they don't want to hear about. They pretend they never happen. Number one. Number one, respecting the audience. 
This is the most, this is the most Orwellian phrase in my book. The executives at Fox talk about, we need to respect the audience. We need to respect the audience by not, by not insulting them with the news of Biden's victory, by not telling them how much Trump lost. And of course you get that by respecting the audience. They're actually disrespecting the audience. They're actually radicalizing the audience by trying to keep the truth from them. Brian, thank you for joining us and congratulations on the book, sir. <laughs> thank you. Great talking with you. Likewise. All comedy needs a little bit of tension in it. You got to have a little bit of tension. And we have escalated to a place where Billy Gill and his iron fist are being tested uh, by Stugatz and potential shirtlessness. We have until Thanksgiving to get the payoff of one hour of televised gut guts. Bring your own guts. <laughs> I know this is all part of the one big setup to get Stugatz to take his shirt off, but... Mm -hmm. Billy just took away our golden helmet of life. He did. He, he yeah. just said that's no longer a thing. You guys no haven't been thing. following the rules. You what? guys have been willy nilly. We haven't. With no, you and Tony have been cheating. You and Tony are the biggest cheaters. No, there hasn't no, been a black helmet of death no. in there. I looked. You took it out. You and Tony are the biggest cheaters. No. In you this did an game. investigation. You should not be punishing I mean, us because you're a cheat. What, what did your investigation show you? Last week, you I and looked through the last bucket. Week, you and Tony's <laughs> hands were in the bucket at the same time. Same and time. Then Tony's emerged with the yellow. Wait, Mike, you went helmet, helmet by helmet. No, I it, went helmet by on. helmet. Really? What? Excuse me. It one. has not been pulled in two years. <laughs> well, been, I started getting suspicious. It suspicious. It's it been it's suspicious. been longer than that because if if I'm going to be honest with you, finally. I believe that that helmet still lives in Allison Turner's purse and has been there since like 2018. Oh my God! Yeah, like that was taken out by her when things were getting out of control with punishments so and great. people oh, were hospitalized, and she's like, "Okay, this people is going to be removed too. so that there's no more, you know, ill will towards this segment, and you know, things are done on the up and up." <laughs> that was like a very parental moment i'd say by her where she's like this can't exist anymore where people are just getting double death because we may actually arrive on death's door so that lived in her purse for some time what a breaking bit of news there yeah. thank you billy for your disclosure for your honesty uh because we all just assumed that you were up to illegal cheating tactics no. and that you were abusing your power as commissioner i wasn't even commissioner at the time that this was removed but management stepped in and like guys man are getting a little cray Who's like, management? Yeah. Who was management? I can't say. What? I, is it Mike? It certainly wasn't me. More hospitalizations. No, Mike, want, Mike wanted like quadruple yeah. deaths. Yeah, more onions. That Liam Chapman. Mike put a grenade in there one time. I did. Oh, the no. babysitter? I did. It was Trog. We had a liability issue? We had a liability issue I did not know about. Ah, come on. Once Billy was One hospitalized. One measly little hospitalization. Yeah. For eating an onion. Game. It was just a good scare. Yeah. <laughs> come on. For Put it back in there. Either way, the golden helmet of life is a good thing. You can't take that away. You guys have been abusing the golden helmet. It's been getting you guys at a ridiculous Tony. rate. It's this you season. and Tony. No, falsehoods. Right, right, even the now. Reaper is over here just the, shaking no, well, his head. Well, the Reaper last week confirmed for us. The Reaper doesn't speak. We asked him yes or no questions. We asked, were there nefarious hijinks involving Billy and Tony? And the, and the Reaper gave it up. The, re the Reaper also the Reaper's admitted a that stench. the Reaper can't see what's going on and just kind of going along with All it. All right. I don't want to discuss Bad this anymore uh, i've got a also the reaper at this point is overworked like the rest of us so he's like i gotta do something else here so look at this i have video going? evidence right now and you don't want to get the reaver's video evidence of you Hold on. look you were handed a helmet in your hand you were handed a helmet by the reaper reese that is unbelievable that was in law we were in los angeles you took advantage of us being in la not even slick it's just a clear well okay if we were going to come clean about everything we could go clean about that as well if you'd like to and by the way that that punishment is no longer valid anyways because that's been like three months so that the uh what is it so you you cheated but you you cheated. Well, no, okay. You I'll cheated you, the game. You cheated yourself. No, you and Dan weren't here, so you don't know what happened. So what? I'm happened, looking at what happened. I'm telling you what happened. So I was in, I was in there, and this back room here, a bunch of wise guys concocted this scheme in which Tony had a golden helmet in his sleeve. So Tony puts his hand in the bucket with the golden helmet in his hand in the sleeve that no one caught somehow. And then I'm sitting there with Stugatz, and as everyone picks, this group of jackals over here said, "You know what?" The, Billy, the Reaper is going to hand you the swab helmet. Take it. And I'm like, I'm trying to co-host, which I was not told I was doing. So I'm just there trying to do that. And they, no that one is believes true. it. This, 
you guys were 100% were all in on this thing and wow. told me in my headset as he was walking in. And the Reaper can confirm that this Billy's happened Billy's like, we're all going spot. down. If I'm going down, yeah. you're all coming down Hell with yeah. me. Yeah. The stew guy's like strong in that guy. You're surprised you guys, by this? You guys put me <laughs> yeah. in this unenviable spot where I have to then go and try to slickly get it out of his hands. Which I got away with it. I had to get the swap out of his hand. Now, that did happen. I will admit that that happened. And you know what? I'm going to be a big man, and I will say last week was 100% on the up and up, and I know that it doesn't look good because of things like that that have happened and Tony <laughs> cheating in the past. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw this week. Even though I am safe for three weeks, I'm going what? to say Thank that you. that counted as that. Just, just and put the I golden helmet back. Just no, stop cheating. No one else. Just stop it's cheating. It's not me. All right, I'm going to pick for this cheat. week. I'm telling you. Right, so so we're gonna gonna hold on. Hold on. I'm guilty by association, and I don't even want to be associated with you him. You could play the music, and Chris <laughs> Cody will go to the bucket in a second. How many people are going to the bucket? This Every 48. single one wow. of us. And it's all brought That's to you by Kentucky Fried Chickens, two for $5 chicken wraps. New... I botched that. That's okay. Let's no, I'm telling you, there's I options. Didn't notice. There's mac and cheese. Yeah. 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 Brand new copy. I'm sorry. I thought I was yeah. buying. Yesterday yeah. I was at KFC. I thought I was getting a brownie. Gosh. I got a full brownie what's cake. It? Wow. Mike, what's it? Mike, the mac and cheese what's strap. The, uh, what's the fast food chain with the chicken? Not the other one. The good one. The best one. Brought to you by. Let me put on my broadcaster voice. Brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken's new two for five dollar chicken wraps. Now in new mac and cheese, classic and spicy slaw. That's right. Chicken wraps are back at KFC. It's finger licking good. Might have been more funny business going on back here just now. I don't even know what these guys are doing. Mm. All right, I have the Seahawks. The Seahawks are on Thursday against the Niners. Put that yeah. one back. Put it back. They are six and a half point dog. At you don't home. know if Gino's elbow is okay. You know Brock Purdy just had a perfect passer rating. Yeah. The underdog helmet. Yay! I'll, I'll get back to you when I'm selecting here. The Cardinals are about plus the mystery one of Tim Boyle. That's, the it seems Bengals like a good are one. plus one at home. Boyle. The Falcons are plus one at home. Falcons are playing the Saints. Cardinals oh. are playing the Rams. I like the Jags. Chris. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Yep. Texans are at home. No, no, no. I'm, oh, Texans yeah. at home. Texans I'm sorry. is what I'm yes. doing. That game yes. I like. I'm gonna go Texans plus one and a half. Yes. Over the Jags. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Billy, go ahead and select. So now, there. Uh, to remind everyone, I am kind of giving up my two weeks of safety to participate in the name of the integrity of the Chris, bucket. Chris okay. Cody, does he presently have a? Uh, I have the Broncos. That was clean. Why would I that was clean. Broncos? That was clean. Well, the Broncos are hot. I All right. Mean, at home against they're, the Browns. They're a two and a half point favorite at home. Oh, just put it's it right back, back in. Wow, against the Browns. Yeah. I like a second draw. I don't care what it is. You're fearless. Same. Look at you. So I got the Giants, oh. so it blew oh, up in my face. Ooh. They are three the and a half point dogs. Uh, Patriots, though. They're playing the yep. Patriots at Winnable. home. Winnable. Winnable game. Three and a half point dog at home. Tommy DeVito's been looking good. They got the one week he looked good. Two weeks. Is it? Is it two weeks that he's looked good? Or is it one week that he's looked good? My quarterback is Zach Wilson. Any other quarterback looks good. Tim Boyle. I, uh, Tim I have Boyle now, sir. Indianapolis Colts, they are playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home. They are a half point favorite. Keep it. No, you seem thrilled gonna, about it. Really? I think I like that over. Boy. Uh, nobody asked you for your total. <laughs> uh, Roy, what are you doing? You I'm going to put it back. A yeah. two and a half point favorite. There aren't very many big favorites this week. No, Three that's not big enough. Oh, no. He put back a big favorite. Apple. He did. The Big Apple, uh, New York Giants, New York Jets, any New York team. It I'm going with the New York Rangers, Dan. Thank you very much. All right. I'll find out who the team is. Okay. You don't even need any, any information. They're the nope. best of the New York teams right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Lucy. I hate this bucket. Uh, with the lights and the wig, I was just going to call you Jessica. That's a fine. Oh, that's, that's a big fine. Blonde that wig. Is, uh, She's wearing I have the wig. Who's a blonde girl? Texans? Yeah. <laughs> They're at home against the Jags. One and a half point underdog, actually. I'll keep this. <laughs> Good job, Smitty. Fine. Uh, the New York Rangers are playing the Pittsburgh Penguins on the road. So, Ooh, Roy. When is it? Well, take that back. Oh, well, something fell out. Uh -oh. Sorry. Sorry. Can, oh, I'm not looking. Okay. Can you just put that back See. in? That's a, mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Roy did that blindly. Well, he just uh, he believes in the Rangers. Weird. <laughs> Definitely more than the Allen. Wizard of Oz helmet. I will take the Lions. Okay. Yeah, that was very quick. The Lions are seven and a half point favorite at home on Thanksgiving against the Packers. Hmm. Uh, an aggressive pick by Mike Ryan. 
Mike Ryan is deep in the gambling weeds, Stu Gantz. He knows every game being played everywhere, every hour, every underdog, every value, every inefficiency. He's gambling again. Uh, Stu Gantz is going into the bucket right I'm now. I'm going to rummage. By the way, while you're rummaging, take yes. your time. You're in it now with Swifties and Kelsey people because your take from earlier, people are putting it in your mouth. Well, that's and fine. I'm that's just trying to help out a friend. He was I mean, just warning it. him about right. the take. I know. I'm, I'm just, not going to do it. I'm just it's for saying, business. His yes. take of c- taking out Kelsey because Kelsey is distracted. I didn't take out Kelsey. It has exploded. No. It is now, uh, it is It is. Cr- it Talk is about how she just keeps releasing the same album. A mm-hmm. lit fuse through the that. internet. Right. Stugatz is hot take going after one of these famous and very handsome and popular Kelsey's. The Browns. Oh, great, yes. The, what? <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the Browns I'm, I'm, are I mean, a, that's a good pick. Uh, good an pick. underdog it. That's, at a good, that's a good pick. I'm throwing it back. Two and a half point underdog. <laughs> What's the name of the kid throwing for them these days? What is the name of their <laughs> quarterback? The, 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 the Constance. D- DRT. DRT. DTR. The DTR. That kid. It's Joe Flacco. Do not <laughs> resuscitate DNR. The kid. <laughs> That's right. The kid. He's a kid. Kid scored, scored 13 points mobile. last week. I didn't say mobile. You said that. <laughs> mobile. Athletic. Zagaki should have said it. Jesus. True athlete. Stugat. Steelers. Steelers are a one this point. This is for Tony, though. Dog yeah, but, on the road. But at the, no Matt Canada anymore. No, no Joe Burrow. Your I point. know. That was for Tony, though. One point <laughs> favorite. <actually. laughs> are you picking for Jess? Or? I got the Cowboys. Oh, Jess, congratulations. I'm picking for myself. Uh, I'm not you're keeping that one. Good job. All right, so, so you got to pick Jess. for everybody else. Go for it. All right, here we go. You're picking for uh, Tony. Dan's now. the last one. I'll pick for Dan first. <laughs> no, <you're picking laughs> Dan's got Tony. the Cowboys. Is this right. Jess or Tony? This is Tony. Cardinals. One point underdog at home against the Rams. That seems like a good one. I'll keep it. <laughs> this is how it worked when you guys were in LA. <laughs> yeah, no, no this kidding. Is for with, with Billy cheating. Yeah. This is for Smetty. I was forced cheating on me by this room. <laughs> the Broncos for Smetty. Two oh, and no, a half point favorite. Nah, they're playing against the Browns. The you don't Browns. want that one. That one back. That's a keep keeper. Two and a half point favorite. Yeah, nah, but they have the kid at quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Dorian something. Uh, she had the Cowboys before, though. Hmm. I'll keep it. Uh, you tried to do that very dramatically. It was not very dramatic. <laughs> Dan has the Cowboys. Dan has the Broncos. Dan has the Cowboys. Uh, Stop doing this. Okay. Shirtless tomorrow. Is it going to be the local hour? <laughs> Spicy slaw. I have the worst angle of anyone in this. You do have a bad <laughs> angle. We've got a tr- we've brother. Got- I'm not sure there are any good ones <laughs> left. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I got to be real with you. <laughs> you're, you're systematically <laughs> taking away the angles. I want to hide okay, though. Yeah, but but this is the worst of the angles. 